Good morning. This is Artie the Vintage Stitcher. I'm so happy that you're here with me this morning. Okay, so um, you will be seeing this on Thursday morning. It is actually Tuesday morning. Um, this is about the only time I have to record a video, so I thought, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna do this quick. Our summer is going by not fast, but a fun. Um, we've been having lots and lots of fun. So I babysit every day. I babysit my grandkids every day. So a lot of times I don't have time to record a video um, because I've got little ones running around. To, on Wednesday, my Patreon Live is gonna have littles running around in the background. We're gonna see how that goes. <laughs> We're gonna see. So if you are a Patreon member and you tune in for tomorrow's or Wednesday's Live, um, you may hear some screaming. <laughs> But it's all gonna be good. So yeah, I've been babysitting a lot. I've been stitching a lot. I've been working um, Doing a lot of the reselling online uh, lots of traveling I just went to a retreat this past weekend with my friend Renita and Mary Jo. We went to primitive gatherings in um, Larson, Wisconsin, which is down by Appleton, Wisconsin and um Linda from Chessie and Me was the guest designer, and it was very, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, it was a lovely, lovely time. It was very, very nice. I met lots and lots of new people, and it was just a very relaxing weekend. Um, I did not go to this retreat to work. I did not go to um, vendor or teach or anything. This was just a, a girls' weekend hang out, put my feet up, and take a deep breath. <clears throat> and it was um, very much needed. It was very much needed and it was very enjoyable. We had a great time. While I was gone there, my husband was gone camping with his three children for Father's Day weekend. They went camping for the weekend and he had a very relaxing time and got to spend some quality time with his adult children, which um, many of you know, you don't always get to finish a conversation <laughs> with your adult children. There's so much going on. So he was really feeling blessed to be able to do that. And then um, we met back here Sunday for Father's Day and then just like vegged in the chair. <laughs> that was the day. We were both so tired and so exhausted by the time we unpacked and got things loaded up and or unloaded. Um, we went grocery shopping and got deli chicken. <laughs> for dinner and just chilled, just completely chilled out. Um, now we're back to work, back to the normal, uh, normal everyday stuff. So it has been about two weeks since I actually done like a cross stitch update with you. Last week was my kit parade, which was a lot of fun. Um, so I have a lot of stitching to show you, lots of new projects. I learned a new skill. <laughs> I learned a new project or a new new craft, just what I need. And I got a little bit of haul, but I did very, very well at this retreat. I did not go crazy wild buying stuff. Um, so I'm pretty darn proud of myself. Pretty darn proud of myself. Some new kits from Annie's to show you. So it is all good. Let's get started. Let's jump right in. Um, I'm going to show you the new thing that I'm working on and it's needlework related. It's floss and fabric related. Um, and I had done this a few years ago, but I really couldn't get the hang of it. And so I kind of set it aside. And so I am starting it again and I learned some new tips and tricks about it and it's all good. It's all good. What is it? Punch needle, punch needle. And it is so fun. It is so pretty. So I was hanging out at Renita's on Thursday, um, just spending the day with her and Mary Jo just stitching and hanging out at the store and not doing anything exciting. Um, and Mary Jo was doing punch needle and I'm watching her and watching her and watching her. And before you knew it, I bought all the stuff and I started a project. <laughs> but I had experts sitting next to me teaching me how to do it. Um, cause there's a couple little tricks that you need to know to do this. This is not just like pum, 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 You can't just go that fast. Um, and I thought you could, I thought it was a speedy process. It's not. So I am having a blast with this. So I started, I bought the weaver's cloth. I bought the smart punch, which of course I didn't bring in here. I bought the, um, Teresa Colgate's smart punch. I think it is. 
Um, so it's a little bit different tool and it's a um, little higher quality than the ones that you can get at like Walmart or Joan Fabrics or whatever. Picked up a pattern. So this is what I am working on with the Valdani threads. It, um, a lot of it calls for the Valdani, Valdani three strand, or you can do um, classic color works, or you could do DMC, or you could do whatever. And I thought, how fun, because I have cases and cases of bobbinated floss that don't have DMC numbers on them, don't have any numbers, they're just random. But you hate to get rid of them, so I am going to put them into um, a punch needle kit, a cut punch needle box. And I do have some Valdani too. So I was really excited to start this one. I am really loving it. And here is where I'm at on this one. Love it, love it, love it. So of course I get to primitive gatherings and I'm all engrossed in this new, in this new passion, right? So I'm gonna show you some of my haul here because it is super cute. Super, super cute. And I didn't go crazy buying patterns because I knew I had punch needle stuff here. I knew I had patterns because I am I had subscriptions to the Permit Punch Needle and Primitive Needlework magazine for years and years and years. And I had books and I've had I have like embroidery patterns that I can use and stuff like that. So I wasn't wasn't like going overly crazy, but I did find some fun stuff. <clears throat> the first one is this cute little, it's called Let It Snow. And it's by Threads That Bind. And they're little Christmas ornaments. Look at how cute. Little bowl fillers. Hopefully there's not too much of a glare. Let me take this out of the package. And the nice thing is they're pre-printed. So you just punch and go. So this is what they look like. How adorbs are those? Love it, love it, love it. So I'm really looking forward to starting to stitch some um, little Christmas stuff. Getting fired up for Christmas in July. I really am. I'm getting really anxious, but I don't want to wish my whole summer away. We have lots of fun things planned for this summer, but I don't want to wish my whole summer away. So I'm excited, but I'm trying to savor some moments too. The other one I bought was this one. It's super cute. Let me see if I can get it out of here. This one is not pre-printed, but it came with the fabric. So I have to trace this one, which is not a big deal, but this one is by Teresa Kogut. How cute is that? It's so folky and primitive looking. It's called um, Christmas Dance. This one is about five by seven. So I might be able to like frame this one. We'll see. How cute is that? I absolutely love it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So that is a new craft to kind of obsess over. Um, but like everything, we're gonna do this with some limitations. <laughs> and I did really well this weekend because I did not buy like just stuff to buy. Um, the things I bought, I said I am buying in kits. It's kits or nothing because if because then I don't have the abundance of supplies just piled up in a tote. I can um, pull a kit, do the project, and walk away and, and be done. And that's what I am, I am trying to get more towards instead of having just piles and piles of supplies for all these individual crafts that I really love to do. If I buy the kit, then I can do that project and move on because I know I'm gonna do one project and be finished. And so my mentality is changing about the, the amount of stuff that I am storing. Um, simply because of the business, the inventory takes up so much space that if I really need something, I can go into my inventory room and grab it. So, <clears throat> all right, let's move on to stitching. All right, stitching. My little snowman, guess what? I finished him. I finished him. I had some goals for this weekend. Uh, I wanted to get to a certain point on certain patterns. This one, I wanted to finish the back stitching on it. So I had, um, I think in my last video, I had finished stitching it, but I procrastinated on the back stitching. 
So I did backstitch my Santa and he's all put away. And I think there was another one. Oh, my 4th of July one, which was just a little bit of backstitching. So that's all put away. I'm not going to show that this week. But my snowman banner is all stitched. Is all stitched. The French knots are done. Everything, all the backstitching. It is ready to be washed and um, finished. So I'm really excited about that. His eyes are a little wonky, but I'm all right with that. I'll press, when I press it, I'll press them into place and they'll, they'll steam into exactly where I want them. Um, but this was fun. This pattern really helped me branch out into a little bit more difficult patterns. Um, and I'll show you my Charles Wasaki because it's coming right along. But it, 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 it put my brain in a place where I can do it. I feel I can do it. So it really opened up the world of some patterns, some vintage patterns that I had really, really wanted to do sometime in my life. And now the time has come. So I'm pretty excited about that. So this is super cute. I did not put the present at the bottom. I, I thought that kind of went over the top. And then when I finish this, because it'll, it'll be finished in a point, I have a little, I have some cute little buttons that I can put right there if I feel that space needs to be filled. So it'll be finished kind of like this and then it's got a little hanging bracket thing that can be finished. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. And I'm going to add some fabric to the back because I don't want anybody looking at my backs. Just personal. Just personal. Alright, <clears throat> what else? Oh, I'm going to save that one. Let's see what we got going in here. All right, the next one, super fun, um, my old beautiful. So if you've gotten your pattern and you're doing the stitch along with me, show me, go over to my Facebook or my Instagram and message me, show me what you're, how far you've gotten. Um, I'm very excited about this one. This is Old Beautiful by Small Town Needleworks. The kits are available through Hometown Needleworks. She has the kits where you can buy just the pattern, pattern and the floss, pattern and fabric, or all three together. And she's got a wide variety of counts on the mushroom um, fabric. So this is super cute. This picture does not do this pattern justice. My goal was to get the words done this weekend. I wanted the words done. Um, words are not my favorite. So I wanted them done this weekend. And then when I did finish them, I stopped and I worked on other things. So here is where my words are. Look at this. And I'm gonna zoom this up close because I want you to see that they're not just solid blue words. She, they are highlighted words. Look at how pretty that is. Look at how pretty that is. So the words, so when you see it in person, it's just amazing. I'm doing mine on the 18 count mushroom, one strand over one. I'm using DMC, I'm using the called for floss, except for the white, I'm using my sulky. Always use my sulky. Um, this pattern only takes five colors. And it is, just the way it's highlighted and, and stuff is just beautiful. So if you haven't started this pattern or you want to start this pattern, get a hold of Renita at Hometown Needleworks. She's got the pattern. Um, she's, she's the only store I know of at, right now who's got the pattern. Otherwise, it won't be out on um, Kim and Jade's Etsy until July 1st. But it only has five colors and the magic of, so it's got two blues, a red, a gold, and a white. But the magic comes in with these variegated flosses. That's where the magic comes in. So the barn and the wheat or anything red is done in this red variegated. And then all that wheat that's on behind the barn is done with the variegated gold. And it's beautiful. It's, it's super beautiful. I just absolutely love it. So, um, it's a nice one for just kind of like mindless, mindless stitching because you're going to get to a point where it's just filling and then it's going to be really nice. So everything is blue, gold, or red and white. Five colors. Five colors. 
very economical pattern um, with a wow factor. With a wow factor. Absolutely love this. So I worked on this at the retreat <clears throat> and I got, well, I had started it last week. I had worked on the lettering a little bit, um, but I wasn't very far on the words. And then with this shadowing, it feels like you have to do the words twice. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I wanted the words done this weekend so that I could get to the fun stuff. So I <clears throat> finished the words. So that is my Oh Beautiful by Small Town Needleworks. And the links will be in the description. I'm trying to get better about my links in the description. I'm not very good at it, but um, I'm trying to be better. All right. Now, my Charles Wasaki. I have been having so much fun stitching this. Um, again, the snowman banner was a huge, huge push into the older patterns I think they're all dimensions patterns um, yes dimensions where the back stitching lines kind of like boggle you they throw your you throw your vision off quite a bit but <clears throat> I'm getting the hang of it and I've been working on the Charles Wasaki spring and I'm not even close to a finish <laughs> I keep saying I'm close to a finish, but I'm not. I have all the fill-in grass. I have all the half stitches yet to do, and then all the back stitching to do. So there's quite a bit of back stitching on this one, but I'm getting there. So I'm working on the spring one. I did pull the floss and the fabric for the fall one because I thought if I finish this spring one, stitching it, you know how we bring a 20 projects to a retreat and but we don't do them all I didn't even come close to being able to stitch on the fall one but I had it ready just in case the next one I'm gonna do is the fall one because I absolutely love it so <clears throat> let me get this this is my spring this is my spring and you know when you're looking at it day in and day out you're like Oh, it's not much. It doesn't quite look like the picture. But then when you show it on camera like this, you're like, ooh, it really looks like the picture. <laughs> so this is coming right along. Absolutely love this. The trees are full of French knots. So I think on that, I have to put that in, in a hoop when I do the French knots because I need the extra tension. Um, and then I have the fill-in down here, the half stitches down here, and then the back stitching. So it is moving, it is moving right along. I do, I work on it, um, I've been working on it pretty religiously. You know, I've been rotating through all of my patterns. So last night I was tired of working on this one. So that's when I did, I finished up the snowman back stitching. Um, it was a busy day with the kids. So I was kind of like tired. <laughs> I was tired. So I just did the back stitching. I didn't want to concentrate too much. But this will probably get pulled back out. This one or the old beautiful and work done. This one, I am doing this on 14 count white. 14 count white. I wanted this to be as easy as possible because this was my first Charles Wasaki. Um, I felt kind of, kind of out of place at retreat because everybody there was a linen stitcher. Nobody was stitching below 36 count. And here I am on my 14 count. <laughs> 1982 pattern oh 1987 pattern with my DMC floss <laughs> but <clears throat> I didn't let it bother me too much um, the pattern we got from Linda was beautiful 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 um, and it came with a 36 count linen which I knew I needed a hoop for one and I needed magnifying for another and neither I didn't bring either of those things so I will do it but I think I'm gonna switch the fabric out for an 18 count. And um, then I will have that all set. I'm gonna switch the fabric out. I'm not not great on 36 count. And I was watching like people around me. It was a tough pattern. It was a hard, it, it's for an expert. And um, so I feel I need to change the fabric out to an eight, a 16 or an 18 count to do this um, so that I don't struggle with it as much. There's some fancy stitches in there, some different things, um, but nothing that requires linen. 
right. Anyway, that's a tangent. <clears throat> so I was there working on my 14 count white, <laughs> like I lived in the 1980s, but I absolutely love this. I love, I am so loving this pattern. So the fall one, I have two different, two different pieces pulled out. <clears throat> And I am seriously thinking, I have another piece of 14 count white, but I am seriously thinking about doing it on this a 14 count like oatmeal or twill, tweed kind of fabric. I'm thinking I'm going to do it on this one because I really like it. And I think it's 14 count. It's either 14 or 16 count. So I'm thinking I will love the fall one on, on this. <clears throat> what do you think? Because I was surprised that on this one, the white spaces are not filled in with white. So on this one, like the empty spaces on the, the ground are not filled in. Let me, let me just double check. Yeah, they're not filled in. So I think this color would look better as the background on the fall pieces. So that is my plan. <clears throat> Okie dokie dokie. And then I have another new start that I couldn't resist. Could not resist. Let's put that over there. So I was on Etsy, <laughs> which is a dangerous place to be. It's a very dangerous place to be. And I seen this pattern. Now, my printer ink died. My colored printer ink died. So this is not green. It is not all this green. It has a very, very, very pretty colors. Um, <clears throat> and when you see the piece, you're gonna go, ooh, yeah. Because it's not green. It's not all this green. It's gonna be very pretty. It's got lots of pretty, pretty colors in it. So this is from Nara Stitches, Nara X Stitch. And it was one of her brand new ones. And I have, I've had a bunch of her patterns like in my shopping cart on and off for months. I absolutely love them, but I'm like, no, you've got enough to do. You don't need to be tackling another big one and you know, just settle down. This one came through and I couldn't resist. I purchased it immediately, immediately. This one and another sampler. The other sampler um, is all kitted up and it's ready to go, but it's more of a fall sampler, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until after July to start it. So I'm stitching mine on 18 count silver with the called for DMC, one strand over one, and this is where I'm at. This is the first page, so it's a six page project. So it's kind of bro broken up. The top is in three, and bottom is in three. So it's very doable. And this is where I'm at. I'm almost done with this first page. I think I have a little bit here to go. Um, and then I'm on to the next page. So I'm very excited. This one worked up really quick. Absolutely adore it. I absolutely adore it. It's so fun. So this is 18 count silver called for DMC one strand over one. All right. So, and you guys would be so proud of me. I have all of my, all of this stuff in project bags. Not like, not like just plastic zipper bags. I have the one from Nara Stitches in this beautiful, I think these are poppies or some kind of flower or geraniums or something like that. They're so pretty, this bag. It was gifted to me. So I have this in here. This was gifted to me by So Much To Love. So Much To Love. All right, let me show you the rest of my bags. Cause you know me, I was putting everything in Ziploc bags and then I was like, I gotta start using some of these bags. My Charles Wasaki is in this beautiful bag made by my friend Renita. She has a bag of the month club and every time we go somewhere, she makes me a new bag. Isn't that beautiful? I love this one. I love hers because they have the double zipper and they are lined with a waterproof canvas. A waterproof canvas. So <clears throat> if you drop them or they get caught in the rain or 
Yes, it is real. You can drop them in the lake because we spend time on the pontoon boat <laughs> in the summer. So yes, my stitching goes with me. So if you drop it in the lake, it's, your stitching's not going to get ruined. So I have hers in that. And then I have my Oh Beautiful in this beautiful, beautiful, like country color bag, zipper bag that um, my friend Linda from Canada brought to me as a gift. So, so pretty. So, so pretty. Like that. Absolutely love this. Love it, love it, love it. So, so that are my, that's my project bags. Okay. The other thing I want to show you is <clears throat> I'm very proud grandma. Very proud grandma. Rhonda has been wanting to learn to stitch. And she is totally obsessed. She has watched me for years. She's played with all my scraps, during my threads, you know, the little orts piles. She'll sit and play with those. And I told her <coughs> once she was five that I would teach her to stitch. So we have been doing so many arts and crafts this summer. We've been coloring and we've been drawing and we've been doing all sorts of stuff. And the other day, Cooper was down for a nap. And I said, do you want to learn to stitch? She was all over it. So, I'm so glad I didn't get rid of some of these things because they are become very useful. So, I had this adorable little kit. It was a pre-printed kit. It came with the colors and the floss and stuff like that. So, she's, we started stitching and here is her stitching. She is doing so good. The hand-eye coordination was a little bit hard for her to hold the hoop and stitch. So I was so happy that I had had this stand. I bought it to try it. I didn't like it. Um, but for her, this is perfect. So I'm able to set this down. She can kind of put it between her legs when she's sitting, and she can stitch with two hands. And this holds her, this holds her work nice and tight. So she is doing really, really well. Um, yesterday we did not have time and she actually fell asleep during nap time too so but hopefully this week we will have time to finish this pink part um, and this is 14 count Ada I kind of thought it was gonna be okay but it's a little small for her um, I might try and pull a different project with a little bit bigger holes until she gets more used to you know the um, Find, the hardest part is for her to find the hole coming back up. Going down is not easy, but I want her to be able to see how to make the X's too. And I think, I'm thinking this is a little small for her, but the challenge is good for her. The challenge is good. Um, I don't think she's going to get like <clears throat> discouraged by it at all. I think she's going to do just fine. Okay. What else did I buy at Primitive Gatherings? <clears throat> um, I got lots and lots of little, uh, you know, cabochons and hooks. And my friend Bernita made us this little ort bag that hangs on these hooks. Hangs on your hook, on your middle stand, right on the corner. And then you have a little ort basket. So cute. She also made me... Uh -uh. She also made me a bag and a floss keep to go with it. So a small bag and a floss keep and the little work bag. Isn't that cute? So cute. I love this fabric. So this is from my friend Renita at Hometown Needleworks. Absolutely love. I love her bags. I love her stuff. Um, so she brought me that and then, you know, we got like needles and little patterns and stuff like that. My friend Mary Jo gave me this little bat bag, like zipper bag for my Valdani threads for my punch needle. That was very much appreciated. Um, oops, something went on the floor. All right. We got a pattern from... Linda from Chessie and Me. I am not going to show it. I am not going to show it. For one, I don't know if I'm allowed to, and I do not want to like spill anything. I don't want to spill anything. Um, it is a, a, a reproduction sampler that she's working on, and she had a portion of it done, so she made it into a pillow, 
and she gave us this portion of it and it is beautiful I I will put it like this and she did sign all of our patterns so that's exciting thank you Linda um, and if you're watching Linda if I'm allowed to show the pattern just shout me out let me know um, and we had all the floss with it on floss cards and the fabric it was beautiful 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 kit and then also during the class we um, we made little cabochons so her threads came on like this thread card with a picture of the um, project right so we all cut out little pieces and made cabochons and then she also gave a class on how to make a little velvet strawberry let me see if I can get this. Look at how cute this is. This is a little velvet strawberry with some wool leaves on it. So cute. So I hooked my little cabochon right to it so that I can have that out. Isn't that sweet? Very, very sweet. This was fun. Working with the velvet is, is a lot of fun. Um, I've done strawberries and other fabrics and stuff, but and they're super easy, but fun, fun, fun. So we did that. Um, I got to meet Denise from Dot Dot Goose. I had never met her before. I've watched her floss tubes, seen her bags, all the good things, but I had never met her, met her. So, of course, she had a basket of bags there, and I had to buy one because, you know, I don't know if it's FOMO or if it's peer pressure, but I, I came home with a bag. Look at how cute this is. And I limited myself to one. Um, there was another one there that I really, really loved too, but I limited myself to one. And look how cute. Those cute little houses are adorable. And I bought this one because I don't have a lot of like just everyday bags. I have a lot of seasonal bags. Um, and the other one was a patriotic. So I let that one go. I let that one go. But look at that fabric. Love it. Love it. Love it. <clears throat> So there is that. All right. Then we went into the store and I did very well. I did not buy any yardage. <laughs> but I bought a bunch of these cute little uh, charm packs. I am a pre-cut girl. I love them. I cannot resist them. These are the two and a half inch squares and I have plans for them. I have, I have plans for them. So I bought this one, this is the New York, New York, New York by Allie K Designs. And look how cute that is. Basically, I went through and I bought a charm pack of everything that they had. I bought this cute little um, Halloween one. It's called Hey Boo. And trust me, the yardage was very tempting. Very, very tempting. I bought Dawn on the Prairie. Look at how cute that is. I bought red and white gatherings, and this is by Primitive Gatherings. So a little red and white, cute. And I bought um, Collection for a Cause etchings by something and three sisters. I can't read it. Um, I can't, the writing is too small. But look how cute that one is too. So I bought those. Love those. Like I said, I have a plan. And then the new Tilda fabric had just arrived. Now I don't do a bunch of stuff. I don't keep up on designers with fabric and you know, I have to have the raging new stuff and I, you know, I'm waiting for it to come out of the box sort of thing. That's just not me. I'm not, that's not me. I don't keep track of fabric designers or the year. I just buy fabric because I love it. Um, I'm not one to keep track of all the, the latest and greatest like Paris fashion. That's, that's not me. <laughs> but the Tilda fabric just came out and they had just unboxed it and it was super cute. There were four, four or five different colorways. There was like a blue, an orange, a pink, a brown, and a red. So I bought the red. Let me let me take this out of the package so we can take a good look at it so i bought this tilda fabric um creating memories and this is the winter and i thought that was so cute 
it's kind of a dusky red. So I can leave this up. I can do something with this and put this up spring, summer, fall. I can leave this out all year because these are my home colors. I have a lot of red in my house and a lot of like the olive greens and stuff like that. So I bought the, the five inch charm pack of that. And then as we're standing at the register, Renita said, oh, look at the cute buttons that go with your fabric. Look at those. So I got those too. <laughs> I got those too. Aside with my punch needle, my fabric, and then I also bought a wool kit, a wool applique kit. Now, I got rid of all my wool. And here is where I said, I'm not buying it unless it's a kit. I am not gonna go through and buy scrap bundles of wool and I'm not gonna feed it, feed, I'm not gonna feed the beast with this one. I bought this, it comes with pattern, the wool, everything you need, I'm just going to do the project and then move on. That is my plan. So it was so nice because every wool project they had in the store was in a kit. You could buy, you could buy the, the wool in bulk, buy yards. They even had like the penny circles, the pennies all cut, pre-cut in bags for you of all the different sizes. So you could have gone through and done like a penny rug and everything would have been cut pre-cut for you, which is great. Now, if I would have, was into penny rugs, I that's what I would do because the sitting and the cutting is what I hate the most. I shouldn't say hate, that's such a strong word. I dislike it. That's the part I dislike the most. But like this, everything is there. The exact amount that you need is there. I think it even has a needle in it. I'm not even sure. But I am not gonna feed the beast and have mounds and mounds of wool. But I do love to do a wool project every once once in a while um so this is this is what I bought that looks to be it that's everything I bought okay one small plug for Annie's craft and um, supplies they are wonderful here's a little commercial um but before I do that don't leave don't leave don't leave okay before I do that if you love the content that I create, please hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, um, hit that notification bell, all the things, give me a thumbs up that all feeds the algorithm for YouTube. It advances my videos and that helps me grow and be able to stay home and do this. Um, if you would like to support the channel even more, I have a Patreon. You can go over to Patreon. You generally you see all of this stuff first um, before the um, videos come out on Thursdays. So Patreon gets to see everything first. And then um, we also have like, I do lives every week over there. So we get to chit chat together and I show you all the things that I'm doing. Sometimes it's just stuff around the house. Sometimes I'm in my pajamas and with a ponytail and no makeup. Sometimes I'm good. Um, and we also do a live class once a month. So each month you learn how to finish something different. Um, this month is a hoop finish. So if you're interested in doing a hoop finish, you can go over and join my Patreon and you get that class um, with the tier three Patreon subscription. All right, I'm also over on Instagram, Facebook. I'm in all the places, all the places. So join me everywhere. All right, Annie's has supported me in, for the last three years. They are a great sponsor of my channel. They send me lots of good stuff, lots of wonderful things. They send me two kits a month and they're all pre-kitted, everything's ready. And mine arrived yesterday. And um, my granddaughter was like, let's open them. And she was all over this. The first kit was this jewelry. Now, I'm not a huge jewelry maker, but every once in a while, I like to sit down and do a project that, or a craft that is just not in my niche or my genre or whatever and do something different. So the nice thing about this is Annie sends you everything you need to make that set of jewelry. So you get the two necklaces, the bracelet, and the earrings. All the makings, all the tools, everything you're going to need. I think you need like one little crimping tool or something like that. That's about it. Um, everything's in there so that you can just make the project, 
and move on with life. You don't have to run to the store and buy anything. You don't have to buy things in bulk or packages where you have all this abundance of stuff left over. It's nice. And I am moving towards kits. So she was very excited. So one of these days we are gonna sit down and make this jewelry. And I think that is great. This is the Creative Woman Kit of the Month Club. They send all sorts of stuff. Uh, everything's different every month. Sometimes you could be macrame or crocheting or knitting or jewelry making or clay molding or scrapbooking or just all sorts of stuff. Painting and stenciling, transfers. Uh, every month you get a variety, something different, and which is a lot of fun if you like to do a variety of crafts, but you don't want to invest in a variety of crafts okay so the creative woman kit is good i will have the link to annie's down below and then they also send me the holiday quilters club which um sends me a sewing a sewing or a quilting project every month i gotta show you this fabric it is so super cute so this month is these cute little baskets and they're so fun. These are so fun to make. I did get these like back in my first year with a different fabric and they're a blast to make. Um, but this month's fabric, let me pull it out, is this. How cute is that? Now this is not fabric I would ever buy. I would never go into the fabric store and say, oh, give me three yards of this. But it is super cute. It comes with all the coordinating fabrics, everything you make to, need to make these two baskets, plus they give you a little bit of leftovers. So then you have it in your scrap basket, which is a lot of fun. But it branches out my, my fabric supply, my fabric stash for one thing, of colors and fabrics that I would never, never gravitate to. So it gives me a chance to use other fabrics um, and try them and play with them. You know, because the goal of every quilter is to use all the fabrics of the world eventually in their lifetime. Well, I'm off to a good start. So, so this just helps with that cause. It has everything in it except for your batting and your uh, supplies, like your rotary cutter, your mat, your ruler, and your batting. So go over, check out Annie's Craft Clubs of the Month. They are absolutely wonderful. Um, always going to have fun with those. Okay, that is all I have for this week. That was a lot. That was a lot. I hope everybody comes back next week for a video. We are back to a weekly schedule. I'm thinking Thursdays are going to be it because it gives me kind of an all week thing to just get that video in. Um, trying to do one coming off the weekend is just it's just insane right now with as much as we're traveling. So everybody have a great week. When you're out and about in the world, please, please. Be kind, spread love, and find peace.